Oh my word, you guys. Look at that. He's full on planking. Beckham. Oh. <gasps> the reason Beckham has cerebral palsy is because he suffered a brain bleed at birth, which was caused by the accident that I got in. It is indescribable what it feels like for me that I know Beckham's genetics and Beckham's makeup was all normal and typical. And that something happened to him that I was involved in, that I had no control over, caused his life to look the way that it does. Hey guys, welcome back to the House of Hughes. I just got done crying my eyes out for an entire hour. It's Tuesday, which means it was therapy day. I do EMDR therapy every Tuesday morning. And even just like leading up to it, I just feel like so heavy and a little bit overwhelmed because I know it's gonna be like such an emotional session, which today definitely was. And I processed so much. And I think this would come as a shock to you guys, but I actually very rarely talk about Beckham in therapy. And today I just unloaded and it helped me identify so many ways that I am processing things that I should have a while back about Beckham and about my accident. And I really want to just get vulnerable and share those things with you guys today and kind of share the ways that I am showing my lack of control for certain situations. I just, you know, want to get deep. What's new? I love that about you guys. You're always my safe haven, my safe place. But first, I am starving. It is like 12 p.m. I haven't eaten yet and I really, really want to get some cardio out of the way. This is my treadmill. And I literally, I seriously should have filmed myself pulling this treadmill into my kitchen, getting it set up in front of the TV because I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I just need like a little detox in the middle of my day and I rarely get that. And I am addicted to this show. I found it on Hulu last night. It's about like, it's like a bachelor type of feel. And it's about these two guys. One is really rich and one isn't. And these girls are dating both of them and they don't know who the rich one is. So it's like, are you in it for love or money? I don't know, it's so good. I stayed up till like 1.30 last night watching it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm like addicted. So I had to drag my treadmill in here so I could watch it while I do my cardio. Because let me tell you, that is the key to getting yourself to do cardio. You need to find a good show to watch and only watch it while you're doing cardio so you have something to look forward to. But I'm gonna get that out of the way so I can make some breakfast. The kids are down napping right now. I have their baby monitors right behind me. So I'm gonna let them sleep and then before they wake up, I am going to chat with you guys about some crazy, wild, emotional thoughts that I have been having. And I definitely needed to work through this and process this. And because you guys know so much of my history and so much of what happened with Beckham because of that original video that I put out, with the car accident, etc., I really want to share with you guys just kind of how it's affecting me, even though it's been, you know, two and a half years and just ways that those emotions are manifesting in my daily life and a big step that I'm taking in order to overcome that. So I'm going to share all of that with you, but I love you. Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and let's just get into the vlog. <laughs> I just got finished walking on the treadmill and holy guacamole, I am addicted to that show. And so it is like so easy for me to just get like carried away. And I was like, Rach, you're leaving the YouTube fam hanging. Stop watching the show, get your butt off the treadmill and update you guys on my therapy session this morning. Okay, let me set you down really quick. You guys know like when I'm in this spot that we are getting ready for a chit chat. I'm also gonna throw on my sweatshirt because my house it's so cold right now. Hunter and I disagree on what temperature we like to keep the house at. 
Let me know in the comments if that's also you and your husband. Because I swear Hunter likes it so cold and then he leaves for work and I'm like, dude, me and the babies, we're here freaking out. We're so cold. Hello, my Chloe girl. And it's also so funny because Chloe will literally find the little patches of sunlight in our house and go and sit there. And I'm like, honey, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. <laughs> Chloe, can you say hello to the YouTube fam? Say hello. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love you. Yes, I do. Okay, we're gonna go talk about your brother. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I feel like this is better. I love just being like cuddly and close to you guys. Like I feel cozy when I'm sitting on the floor. I don't know why, but it's just like my vibe when I wanna talk to you guys something about like a little bit more intimate. I just feel like it's less like staged, set up. Like, you know, my sit down videos, I'm like always sitting in my chairs like so proper. <laughs> and I feel like when I just wanna like chat with you in the middle of a vlog, I just wanna do it like a little bit more intimately. So, hello, thank you so much for being here. I, like I mentioned earlier, I'm feeling really like overwhelmed with emotion because I'm typically like that all days, but even more so on the days that I have therapy. And you guys know, I've talked to you a little bit about my OCD and anxiety. And when I started recovering from my breast augmentation, a lot of my behaviors got like a lot better. I was having some really bad OCD with like my hair, my makeup, and the cleanliness of my house. And it actually got much, much better when I didn't have to really worry or focus on any of those things because I was in recovery. So you can say that those behaviors were almost like a little bit suppressed. Well, now that I am like fully recovered and doing great, I have noticed, you know, some of those behaviors really start to come back. I mentioned this in like my little update with how my mental health is doing. And I didn't really get into like specifics for you guys. And I kind of want to do that because I feel like that is what people do not share. That is what people don't do. They don't talk about what their depression and anxiety actually look like. They just talk about it very general and very broad. And I kind of want to get vulnerable with you guys, kind of let you know how I am on a daily basis, you know, and some things that happen when the camera is off, because of course, in these moments, I'm not like, oh, let me grab my camera and film, you know? So lately, my OCD tendencies have really shifted to a lot of like controlling tendencies. Now, my need to control looks different than you would expect it to look. I feel like when you think of someone who's like a quote unquote control freak, you think of someone who would have like a really strict schedule with their kids who would be like really strict with their husband. And I am not strict with people or feel the need to control people. I more so feel the need to control my surroundings. And I am very, very triggered by my lack of control when things don't go exactly as I've planned or how I anticipate, especially when it comes to like work or things that I'm doing. Like for example, something that would be really difficult or triggering for me is like not knowing how to edit something or working on something and feeling like I'm not getting it down or I'm not understanding it. That makes me feel a very overwhelming sense of a lack of control and I get a lot of anxiety and it really stresses me out to a point of having an emotional reaction that's really not logical. It is very interesting because I am really not like this with my children or my husband, but I'm very much like this with circumstances, again, that don't really involve people. It's very interesting. So I think I mentioned in my original video that time frames are like very, very difficult for me. It's very hard for me that I can't control traffic. I can't control exactly how fast I'm going to get somewhere. And it makes me feel out of control to not be able to control every variable, if that makes sense. And so when I was in therapy this morning, I was explaining, you know, I feel like I'm almost getting worse. Like I feel like my need to control is triggering me all day long every day that I don't even like trust my own emotions. Like I don't trust myself. I'm like so worried that I'm gonna get so stressed out and so anxious that it's just gonna ruin my entire day. And I feel like this all day long. Like at any point during the day, the day could turn into a bad day because of these feelings of being so overwhelmed and so anxious about, again, things I can't control. And we started to do an EMDR session surrounding this and 
the floodgates just like opened, you guys. A lot of times, the things that I'm really afraid of and that I'm really feeling manifest in other ways. Like, it's okay if I try to send an email and the email doesn't go through. That is logically okay, right? Like, my world's not gonna end, but for me, that feels like my world is ending, something that small. It makes me feel so overwhelmed. And the reason for that is because the reason that I'm actually feeling overwhelmed and the things that actually make me feel like my world could end, I'm pushing aside. I'm totally suppressing. I don't even allow myself to think about it. So it makes these other things that are very small and nitpicky be at the surface because where I really feel a lack of control in my life is so sensitive and so sacred and honestly so fearful that I rarely discuss it, I rarely think about it, Hunter and I rarely discuss it, and it probably seems like I discuss it all the time because of YouTube. But something that you guys have to remember is like, I'm alone right now, right? Like I'm alone in my house, I'm talking to a camera. So it feels like I'm talking to myself. And it's almost like you guys get a little peek inside my mind when I'm having these little sit down chit chats with you that are more intimate because I'm really just talking out loud. I'm just saying my thoughts, it's like I'm talking to myself. And I just have like the most supportive, loving people ever on the other side of this camera, which is the biggest blessing in the world. But of course, the fear and lack of control that I'm feeling stems from my fear of the future and lack of control when it comes to Beckham and the unpredictability that his disability causes in our lives. And it is very, very fearful for me. I am so careful about what I speak into existence and part of that is almost unhealthy because I am so afraid that there are possibilities that are negative that I can't even think about it. And it's actually caused me to not process certain things that are vital to my mental health and my ability to move forward with my life. You guys know that the reason Beckham has cerebral palsy is because he suffered a brain bleed at birth, which was caused by the accident that I got in. It is indescribable what it feels like for me that I know Beckham's genetics and Beckham's makeup was all normal and typical and that something happened to him that I was involved in that I had no control over caused his life to look the way that it does. My lack of control in that specific situation has traumatized me to a point of causing severe mental illness at this point in my life. In saying that, I have taken the necessary steps that I need to move forward because I am 100% dedicated to being the best mom, the best wife, and the best person that I can possibly be. So I am meeting with a psychiatrist so that I can get on medication for my anxiety. I can't imagine feeling like I'm not in flight all the time. And I am so excited to see what this medication can do for me. I wanted to put out this video. I wanted to talk about this because this is my life. These are repercussions from what we have been through. And I don't want anyone sitting on the other side of this camera to feel like, oh my gosh, she went through something so traumatic and she's just like chipper every day because that is so not the case. You know, I know that I come on camera and I cry all the time. But obviously the things that I say to my therapist or the things that I say to my husband are things that you guys really don't hear. And I have really just been having a hard time lately, honestly. And it's interesting because with mental illness, you know, some days are really good and your highs are really high and your lows are really low. And I am really looking forward to having some medication to help me stabilize that out a little bit while I continue to work on the root of the problem. Because of course, 
I want to progress when it comes to my actual ability to handle and cope with the things that I have been through and I want to overcome that trauma and I know that I am taking the baby steps in order to do that. I feel, although overwhelmed with emotion today because of how much I processed in the MDR this morning, I feel like so good. I feel so stable right now. Honestly, I think a lot of that is because when I am feeling these overwhelming feelings over things that are so tiny, I can't help but sometimes think like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I so anxious about one tiny thing being at a place that doesn't matter? Now that I know it's because of certain things that have happened that have gotten our family to where it's at now, things that I couldn't control, things that have severely traumatized me physically, mentally, and emotionally, I actually feel like, oh my gosh, okay, there's a method to this madness. This is why I am the way that I am. And that means I can fix it. I always tell you, you know, you can't change something you don't acknowledge. I'm grateful that I'm finally in this place where I'm realizing like, Rach, you probably need to process that. You probably need to accept certain things instead of suppress them. I'm gonna keep sharing this with you because I want you to feel less alone because I know that when I go through and read your comments, I feel a lot less alone. I can hear my spicy little boy upstairs. He has been eaten so good for mama. You guys know mama's back on top. I actually just launched my video. I probably shouldn't even tell you this because it will show you how far ahead I am with my videos, which is exciting and fun. But sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, the videos that I'm launching happened like four weeks ago. So I always have like updates that I want to tell you guys so badly. And so as I'm like going through the comments on the video that I just launched today, which was the feeling defeated video, I just like want to comment back and tell you guys all of the happy things that have happened since that video and all of the progress that we've made with Beckham's feeding. But I'm like, no, no, just wait. They have videos coming where they'll get totally updated. So I just wanna thank you guys for watching my videos, being here for the crazy emotional ride that happens in the House of Hughes. But man, with highs as high as we've had, you know, the lows are gonna be low. And I'm just grateful that I am learning to ride the wave. And I know that things are only going to progress from here. So I will certainly keep you updated. Let's go get that cute freaking boy because you guys know, Mama needs some cuddles today. I'm just now realizing that I think Chloe was probably like in the frame of that entire little chit chat, but you guys are always asking about my little Chloe and sometimes you get concerned when you don't see her and I'm like, oh, don't worry, I promise she's here. Chloe's just kind of like a cat sometimes and she will literally just like lay on the furniture and relax. But literally look at this. I told you guys she finds little spots of sunlight. This is not a joke. Is that where you're the most warm, my little angel? Yeah, mommy needs to keep the house a little bit warmer, huh? You're such a good girl. I think I can hear my little boy. <gasps> Excuse me, handsome, what are you doing? Did you have a good sleep? I think you only slept for like an hour. You didn't take a very long nap, handsome. Can you see the camera? Wow, look at those beautiful eyes. Holy cow. Can you guys even believe how successful that surgery was? It's amazing. You got some bedhead going on, my dude. And we need to get you dressed, huh? Can I have a kid? Why, thank you. Here, let's get you a nice little outfit. How does that sound? What are you laughing at? You being so cute, what do you think about this one? That's pretty cute. Or do the grays not match? The grays kind of don't match. How about a pair of jeans? Does that sound good? Okay, perfect. Let's do a big pair of jeans, huh? Thank you, mama. Oh my goodness, those are some comfortable jeans, huh? So quick, good job. Good job. Okay, now this side. <laughs> Ready? Good job. All done. <laughs> Yay, claps for Baba. Good job. Good, can I have the other one? Good job. Beckham and I are gonna work on a few little exercises that we've been working on for his vision and also just for occupational therapy. So we've really been working on Beckham using his right hand because he'll really use his right hand to balance when he's sitting up 
and he naturally grabs with his left. You guys already know that. So we've been working on grabbing toys with both hands. So we'll see how he does today, but no matter what, I know you're doing your best and you're still perfect. Okay, wanna try? Good, good job. Okay, my turn. There you go. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Good. Good. Shake it, shake it. It's over here. Good. Good job, love. Okay, my turn. <laughs> Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Good job. So you guys, this is pretty amazing for him to be able to multitask while he's sitting up. He's just come so far. It is so freaking cool. I mean, six months ago, you know, we didn't know when he would reach the milestone of sitting up. And now it's like, look at him. And she's so proud of him. Hi. Now we're gonna try another game. Are you ready? Go stop. Wanna play again? Good job. Go stop. Wanna play again? Go stop. Wanna play again? Good. Go. Okay, so you guys see how he is communicating with me. I mean, how freaking cool is that? Why you so smart? Oh, again? Mama, again? I wonder how it feels for Becca, you know, to be the smartest child in the entire world. Look who's awake, my gorgeous girl. Can you say Chloe? Chloe. Good job, can we come down the stairs nice and safe? Look how long her hair is, you guys. She is growing up so fast. My mama heart seriously can't take it. Good job. Good job, baby. All right, Chloe, you better come with us. Look at that. Who's my big girl? Good girl, can you be soft? Yeah, you be soft. Good girl. Here you go, Papa. Oh my goodness, all the rings. Those are so fun. Here, should we do your favorite thing? You guys, I'm not kidding. For the first two years of his life, he literally didn't touch a toy. You are so smart. You're doing so good in your occupational therapy, huh? You're the coolest guy. This is why I don't work in my office anymore and I only work in the kitchen. Oh wow, that was aggressive. Can you show me how you get it safe, please? No, we go down backwards. See, she could lose her balance so quick. Good job, Blakely. There you go, good girl. So Hunter just called me from work and he was like, hey babe, do me a favor. I want you to put Beckham in his little knee grips for the rest of the day and just see what happens while he plays. Oh my word, woman, could you resist? So I'm gonna go ahead and put him in his little knee grips that you guys recommended, so freaking shout out to you in the comment section but I'm gonna put these on him and just see if it makes him utilize his knees just a little bit more while he scoots around and plays. All right, Bubba, we're all set. <laughs> Do you see yourself up there? Good girl, you're so beautiful. Yeah. Look. Oh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna give claps? Good job, beautiful. Good job. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, is that a bodybuilder I see? I think he's doing some pull-ups, you guys. Look at him literally holding onto that chair. Beckham, you flipping genius. 
Good job, honey. Good job. You're such a smarty. Okay, let's go ahead and see what these little knee grips do. I feel like it just makes him like more aware of his knees. I just ordered these off Amazon. I don't know if any of your kids need these, probably not, but I will still link them. I actually, you guys, I created an Amazon store, which I am like so freaking hyped about. It took me forever. It was like really stressful for me, I'm not gonna lie. But I basically have like a storefront. The link's gonna be in my bio and it just has links to like everything that I love and use from Amazon. I have like home, baby, lifestyle and beauty, food, kitchen, etc. So if you're ever looking for something that I have that I say I got from Amazon, you can click on that link in my bio and it will take you to my Amazon storefront and you can shop all my links. Of course, I am so appreciative when you guys shop through my links. Like you have no idea how much it means to me. So thank you so much for your constant support. Blakely's on the coffee table right now. Girls gotta go. Look you guys, he wants to go up the stairs. Look at him trying so hard. Blakely, are you gonna help him? You guys look, she was trying to help him. Oh my goodness, so sweet. I know, Bubba, but I'm gonna let you experiment. I'm gonna let you kind of play around. Oh. That is amazing. Oh my word, you guys. Look at that. He's full on planking. Beckham, you are so strong and so cool. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm having a heart attack. I need to FaceTime Hunter. I love when you guys can see little Beckham here in the background. He is being so cute, kind of having a little bit of a hard time because we're not doing TV time today. That was Blakely's water bottle. She's in the high chair. Everyone's safe, guys. Everyone is safe. Baba, I know it's frustrating, but we can't watch TV all day, every day. We're getting used to more toys. So, as you can see, girls gotta go. My man just wanted to wrap up the vlog with me. Everyone in this house needs a shower, so I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, Baba, you'll see him soon. We'll be back for another video so soon. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you haven't yet, hit that red subscribe button down below so you don't miss any important milestones in our little babe's journey. And of course, we want to remind you guys to be brave like Beckham. We love you and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Can you blow kisses? Oh my gosh, he's closing his mouth.